Hello and welcome to a brand new edition of Smart Money. Now the theme of today's discussion is financial independence, which we all know is the status of having enough income or wealth sufficient to pay your living expenses without having to be employed or dependent on anyone. However, today we debate whether it's possible to achieve financial independence by 40 or is that a myth? And if it's a possibility, then what are the sources of passive income that I can generate to achieve complete financial independence by the age of 40? Well, our guests on the show today, we have Dilshad Bilimoria, the Managing Director and Principal Officer and MF Advisor at Dilzar Consultants, and Vrin Agarwal, the Financial Educator and Director of FinSafe India. Uh, women, welcome to the show. It's an all-women house today, so power-packed lineup, if I must say so myself. Uh, Dilshad, let me begin with you, right? First, we all know that financial independence should be your goal uh, in volatile times like today. But what are the initial steps that need to be taken for someone to achieve financial independence early on in their life, say by the age of 40 or 45? Hi, Sonia. Thanks for having me on the show. Um, so, yeah, I think there are many things and many small things that people could do when it comes to, uh, you know, having a disciplined approach to savings uh, and therefore achieving financial independence. So they could start with, uh, you know, creating a separate investment uh, account. So whatever they receive as a salary could uh, first be saved and then the balance can be used for expenses. Um, the other option is to start uh, saving as early as possible, right? So the, the benefit and the power of compounding uh, works immensely when you start early and save regularly. Um, and um, also to ensure that you're able to set aside a fixed amount uh, at a, a you know, periodic interval. So the consistency in savings is very, very important when it comes to creating financial independence. Um, having a good uh, asset allocation is again very important so that your money grows uh, uh, you know, as hard as uh, you have earned it uh, to be. Uh, and to allocate it you know, wisely into various investment uh, buckets. So by that, it would mean uh, dividing your time horizon as short term, medium term, long term, and accordingly filling each of these buckets with uh, investments in uh, you know, short term instruments like uh, liquid and arbitrage, medium term like fixed income and long term like equity. So these are where, you know, small ways in which people can create uh, a substantial pool when it comes to savings um, and financial independence. Okay, so those are some basic steps, right, on how you should be achieving financial independence. I want to get Mrin Agarwal into this conversation as well. Uh, Mrin, financial health is so much like physical health, right? People remember it only when they need it. When you're physically healthy, you don't really think about, uh, you know, insurance or working out or taking care of yourself. But it's when suddenly some disease comes up that you realize, oh, I need to get some life insurance. But that by that time, it's too late. Similar is the case with financial health. So if I want to plan my retirement corpus well in advance, right, when I am young, what are the steps that one needs to take? So good afternoon, Sonia, and it's lovely to be here today. Um, yes, um, I think Dilshad talked about a lot of things that you need to do, small steps. Uh, I think one of the other things that's very important is to um, work out the numbers, right? So very often what we find is that uh, people have this one golden one crore number uh, in their mind thinking that, okay, one crore is going to be sufficient. Typically, I have seen that uh, these numbers tend to be off by at least three to five times, basically, right? So that means you actually need more than three to five times of this golden one crore number that, that you think of. So the first thing I think is also to look at uh, understanding what is the requirement based upon your expenses. Everything is based on expenses, um, your current expenses, of course, extrapolated to the future for inflation. And how do individuals do this? Well, there are a lot of retirement planning calculators that are available online, which can just tell you what is the requirement of the corpus and what you need to be investing on a regular basis for this. So it's just going to give you that number. Of course, beyond that, there's a lot of planning. But in order to get this number, what is very important is to understand that inflation has a very big role to play. Uh, and most often, people don't take into account inflation. 
Um, and of course, you, the other thing is estimating expenses correctly because uh, you might think that you, maybe your expenses might go down. That's not the case because lifestyle expenses do tend to creep in as you grow older and um, or they get replaced by other expenses, maybe like medical expenses. You also have to think about what you want to do during retirement. And especially if you're planning to retire at 40, you have a long, long um, uh, journey ahead. So what are you going to do for the next 30, 40 years? You're going to need money for that as well, right? So uh, take into account what are your current expenses? What do you need money for? Um, and of course, inflation, use this calculator to figure out how, how much you need to be how much corpus you need to have and how much you need to be investing for that. Okay, you know, I saw a very interesting plate and I want to get that up on the screen for our viewers as well, right? You spoke about that magical one crore number that everyone wants to reach by the time they retire. I have here a table that Marin has put together for us. If you invest 25,000 rupees every month, that's the amount that you need to invest, a measly return rate, I mean, this is a base case return rate, I guess, that they're looking at, 6%. After 20 years, you'll have a corpus of over 1 crore. And if you look at a return rate of 10%, which I guess most equity funds do give you, after 20 years, you'll have almost a 2 crore corpus. So Dilshad, I want to get you on this. This is, uh, of course, the table that Mirin has put forward for us. Uh, is it as simplistic as this? If I invest 25,000, say when I, am, uh, when I start working at the age of 21, right? Is that the kind of corpus I can generate 20 years from now? Your views. Yeah, I think the most important uh, point is the R in all this calculation, which is the rate of return, which is what Mrin was showing. So obviously, uh, you know, if you were to invest at a lower rate of return, the corpus that you would generate would be lower. If you were to, you know, gen uh, invest at a higher rate of return, uh, the kind of corpus that you would generate would be larger. So I think uh, in the compounding calculation and in the entire retirement formula calculation, the very crucial point are R and N. R stands for the rate of uh, return and N is the number of years. And uh, both being higher are always better for you. Okay, all right. In fact, we're getting a lot of queries live. So I just wanted to get some of them on board and address them with our uh, experts. Sumit Vyas has just written into us. He asks us, he wants to know how much of a corpus does he need for retirement 15 years from now in order to live comfortably in a city like Mumbai. Now, this assumes importance, right, Mirin, because living in Mumbai is an expensive affair. You have to take into consideration inflation as well. Uh, we don't know uh, his age. We don't have any idea of what his annual income is. But just ballpark, would you want to help him with his query? Yeah, well, again, a lot of it depends on expenses. Um, is there going to be rent uh, or does he live in his own house? Um, let us just assume that um, he needs the money after 15 years. He plans to retire after 15 years. And uh, from there on, he wants to plan for a 20-year period. Um, let us assume that maybe if he's um, having expenses of 1 lakh rupees, current expenses of 1 lakh rupees, and assuming inflation at 5% and return on investment at 8%, He's looking at a retirement corpus of four and a half crores. So that's the amount that you can look at, provided your uh, expenses are one lakh rupees. Okay. Dilshad, what about you? What would... uh, We don't know what his age is, but say he's 35 and he wants to retire in 15 years. And um, uh, so by that time, he would be 50. And his current uh, expenses are 1.25 lakhs a month or 15 lakhs per year. Uh, in the next 15 years, to maintain the same standard of living, he would need a, a, you know, an annual expense of 36 lakhs, that's over 3 lakhs uh, a month, and therefore a corpus to sustain him from the start of age 50 till, say, his life expectancy, which could be 75, uh, he would need an 8 crore corpus. <clears throat> and that's quite a large uh, <clears throat> number. But um, it all depends on, uh, you know, what is that, uh, you know, longevity risk of the client? What is the start of his uh, retirement date? What are his current monthly expenses? And most importantly, what is the current asset base like? I think these are the factors that would determine what the entire retirement corpus would look like. Okay, so you're saying that 15 years from now, he'll need 36 lakhs annually 
as an expense and for that he has to build a corpus of 8 crores so what would your recommendation to him be if he had to sort of split that uh, you know the investment uh, between equities debt uh, what is your recommendation so that decision would be based on his risk profile um, and uh, typically for someone who's age 35 they can definitely afford to take more uh, risk uh, you know and a uh, bucket the investment for retirement for long term which would even help him grow his retirement corpus much more so you know he would need to invest a large amount to attain this 8 crore corpus if he already has investments and savings apportioned towards uh, this like for example if he has epf or ppf or national savings schemes or nps i think these are the uh, you know uh, uh, you know existing assets that would help grow towards that retirement corpus so it would actually need to identify what his current investments are and therefore what is that gap that he needs to bridge uh, to meet the retirement goal Okay okay all right so since we are talking about a lot of mutual fund investments as well right to grow your corpus we have a query coming in from Rahul he has an SIP of 12000 rupees in six funds and he wants to know if he should make any changes to his portfolio he's 31 years old and has a moderate risk uh, he's a moderate risk investor so uh, he has funds there's access blue chip there's mira emerging there's parag flexi cap lnt mid cap sbi small cap and icic a multi cap any changes required in this portfolio now mrin uh, your views on this does this portfolio look okay to you do you think he has too many funds you know because that seems to be another issue as well right you duplicate stocks by accumulating too many funds your views on that um i think it's fine uh, the main because he's got a good spread of small cap mid cap um multi cap funds as well so i think it's fine but certainly he should not add on any more funds and uh, what is very important is that for any further investments um he should stick on to these funds of course we don't know what is the sort of mix between these funds so uh, that's also important like you know there's no point in having a very small amount in just one fund and then a lot of money concentrated towards one fund so i'm i'm hoping that it's a good spread All right uh, well let's do one thing let's slip into a quick break but we'll be taking many more of your queries on the other side keep writing to us we'll come back with our guests in just a bit stay tuned Welcome back to Smart Money. The topic today is uh, financial independence and whether you can achieve financial independence at an early age. Uh, we've set an age of 40. Of course, it looks unrealistic, but the moot point is if you start early, you can benefit from the power of compounding. Um, Rin Agarwal has been sitting with us. Uh, we also have Dilshad of Dilzer Consultants telling us how to prep for your retirement uh, to sit with a hefty corpus. Um, Rin, I want to understand. how should people with different salary brackets plan their investment and you've given us a very interesting table as well i'm going to get that up for our viewers on the screen um no this is not this is the balancing risk and returns the salary bracket is the one that i'm actually talking about where there are different salary brackets between the age of 25 30 and 35 so if this is your annual income say for example 10 lakhs 15 or 30 lakhs then these are the kind of investments that you need to make per month in order to get a retirement corpus of around 3 to 6 crores you know by the time you are 40 now amrin just take us through this right this is a case study that you've done um what are the investment tools that you need to get into to achieve these numbers actually uh, yes this table was basically to show you uh that if you are planning to retire at 40 what is it that you need to do uh it's it's a little difficult honestly you know because uh what is very important is to look at for example if you are 30 today and what's your net income post tax of course and we've assumed certain expenses uh based on loans and of course uh, your expenses and so if you look at it the person is saving around 47000 per month whereas the amount to be invested is around 2 lakhs because the retirement corpus is in the range of about 4 crores and odd right of course we've also taken into account the fact that the person would have epf that's already there so keeping that in mind those are the sort of numbers that we are really looking at and 
it's it's not an easy thing to really do this. I mean, there is always going to be a gap between your saving and between what you're really expected to save. So I think, you know, uh, and, you know, also going back to the previous table that I had shared, that it is very important in this case to actually invest aggressively um, in equity. So normally what happens is that people tend to uh, be very conservative. They tend to just stick on to uh, the employee provident fund or uh, safer investment that's giving you a fixed return, but do not consider um, uh, equity investments for retirement, or even if the equity investment is considered, it's considered in a very, very low allocation. And that's where the previous table, which I had shown that if you have, if you are investing at 6% versus if you are investing at uh, 10%, what the difference in corpus can be between 1.15 to 1.9 crores, right? So, uh, the, 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 you know, and this, I do play, put a lot of emphasis on um, using these calculators because see, not everybody has a financial advisor. While ideally you should be working with a financial planner on your retirement plan, but if you do not have access to a financial planner, then the first step really is to figure out how much to save. And it's only then you can figure out whether you can actually retire at 40. The second part of it is to invest aggressively. And I, and I see the other table that's up as well. Uh, as we see in India, uh, the allocation to equity is in the range of about 5 to 10%. So with that sort of an allocation, your overall portfolio is generating you a very low return, which is not beating inflation. And it's only with a higher allocation to equity can you actually look at even beating inflation in the first place. So figuring out the number based on your income, of course, and your expenses and investing aggressively in equities would be what I would recommend for DIY investors. So this table is also very interesting, balancing risk and return, right? So what Mirin is trying to tell us, I just want to get that table up. Uh, if you invest only, put only 5% of your money in equities and the rest in maybe FD and insurance, the rate of return that you're getting is less than 6%. But if you get more aggressive in equities, right, look at portfolio C, 50% in equities, your rate of return goes up all the way to almost 9%. So this is, of course, FinSave India's views and it depends on what kind of equity you're investing in. But the moot point is equities will give you a higher return, right? Uh, so tell us about the different investment tools, Mrin. If you invest in, say, equities compared to, say, EPF, of course, your, you know, EPF, PPF bracketed together. Then there's the debt market investment as well. Um, have you done any kind of analysis on in the longer term, what would sort of help you generate better returns? Well, uh, again, uh, you know, while we can tell people that go and put 50% money into equities, uh, it, a lot of people may not be able to do that. So you do have various debt options that are available. Um, under the fixed return, of course, you have the Employee Provident Fund and you have PPF as well. Um, and then you have a, 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 a whole lot of debt funds. You also have the NPS, corporate bond and the government bond categories. Now, typically, when you look at the returns over 10 years or 5 to 10 years, you see that uh, the debt funds have given you anywhere in the range of about 5 to 7%. And uh, the NPS returns have been slightly higher. And I guess that's really to do with the fact that it's very low cost. So if you see NPS returns have been about one, one and a half percent higher. But again, this is not a recommendation to, uh, you know, uh, choose a NPS over a debt fund. You need to, do need to do your research uh, correctly. Now, when we look at the equity options, I think there are only two options. One is equity funds and the other is NPS. I do not recommend stocks because I don't believe that most individuals can really figure out what stocks to hold for the long term. And of course, I do not recommend the investment linked insurance plans because they really do not yield you returns that can beat inflation. So uh, what you're left with is then equity mutual funds and a whole variety of equity mutual funds. And of course, you have the NPS uh, active equity option as well. I do recommend NPS for people uh, who find it very difficult to figure out which fund to buy when, you know, do, do I hold it till my retirement? And for people who are very confused about all of this, I think NPS is a great product because you just have to invest. They're going to take care about where to invest. 
and the money is logged in till the age of 60 so that also makes you very disciplined sure. the only thing that you have to keep in mind with nps is that at the age of 60 only 60% of the money comes tax free and 40% gets invested into an annuity so you need to be fine with that because annuity is going to be taxable as well so i think the trade off between uh, equity fund and nps is really do i want uh, the regular pension um, or do I want more flexibility where I choose the investments, I choose the funds and I have the ability to exit when I want to. Okay, I'm glad you brought out this topic about, uh, you know, the EPF and the different kind of investment tools because we have a financial tip of the week for our viewers. Here are five reasons why the Public Provident Fund or PPF is a good investment tool. So let's tell you a little bit about that. The Public Provident Fund is completely safe as it is backed by the Government of India. So that's one reason to invest. It's a low risk investment with guaranteed returns. It is a tax saving tool because the amount invested, the interest earned and the overall maturity amount are all tax free. After saving for three years in a PPF account, you can also avail a loan against your invested amount. So that's another reason. And finally, you can start investing in a PPF account with a minimum of 500 to about maximum of one and a half lakhs a year. So you don't need to have a lump sum amount to have a PPF account. So that's just a financial health tip of the week. And uh, we thought, you know, we'll just bring it to our viewers since this is a financial literacy show. But finally, then I just want to get a, f a comment from you, Umrin. Uh, you know, some queries coming in on since investing in index funds is uh, highly advised these days. Can you give us two or three index funds that one can look at? Um, well, I like the ICICI Nifty Index Fund and the UTI Nifty Index Fund, both being Nifty 50 funds. I also like the ICICI uh, Next 50 Index Fund. And I think on the mid-cap 150, one can look at Motila Loswag. Okay, that was pretty quick. Thanks a lot uh, to both of you, Mrin and Dilshad, for joining us on this special episode of Smart Money where we talk about financial independence. With that, it is a wrap on this edition. Thanks a lot for watching.